This video was supposed to be about this Sainsbury's outdoor garden light and initially this light did have a globe on top. Here's a rough indication of the diameter, maybe about three or four inches in diameter. And uh, we were discussing, the, well the whole point of this is that it's a outdoor light that runs off three rather undersized triple A's. And initially when I got this I thought it was an indoor light, I didn't realise it was waterproof for outdoor use. But it's got one of these uh, LED filaments, but presumably with all the chips in parallel in this sort of plastic pinch seal in the globe. And the bottom, when I went to put batteries in it, I didn't realise there were batteries in it already, I realised it's held on by four, uh, should I say three screws, that have a rubber seal underneath, so it is kind of an attempt to make it completely watertight for outdoor use. And this thing does have a timer in it. It's got the usual function that you can turn it on, uh, off, and then with a timer function. And the filament, I'm guessing, it is just those parallel LEDs inside. It looks quite smart. It looked quite smart because uh, we were discussing it while we partook of some Bundaberg ginger beer with rum in it, uh, dark and stormy. And we were discussing what the globe was made of, and my co-worker Steve reckoned it was made of plastic because it, it felt really plastic when you tapped it. And I reckoned it was made of glass, and, you know, it, it was really indecisive, and uh, you could tap it with your teeth, and it kind of felt like glass, but not quite. And I tried scratch it with a knife, and it didn't scratch, so thought maybe it is glass then. Vince the crew chief came in, and he had a go and he did the tooth test as well. And then he took a spoon and just tapped the top of it. And that's when we found out, yes, it is made of glass and it's very, very thin glass, which might have accounted for the, no the sort of plasticky noise. And then we had to clean all the broken glass up. But on a plus note, uh, there's no qualms about going into this now. So let's open it up. I'm not sure the best end to go in. I think this is glued on at this end, but we could prize it out. Let's do this because Vince hinted oh this is so much risk of broken glass and yeah this is dodgy am I going to cut myself one moment please <sighs> one minor liberation of blood later when the glass managed to find its way through two layers of cardboard as I unscrewed this and it has unscrewed and if we look at the construction let's just grab a pair of scissors since that's all I've really got here it's quite odd this is threaded but they've got what looks like a metal Edison screw base embedded into what I'm guessing is resin and this uh, thing here the plastic core that supports the filament they've taken the wires down that are they're actually soldered, I thought they were spot weld, but they're soldered onto the filament and they've just bent them sideways and then soldered wires onto them. So let's take a look at, not soldered very well, look of it from that one, but then again, it has been subject to extreme stresses. Right, okay, let's see if we can get the other end out. This is where the blood will not be liberated, fortunately. Let's uh, bring in some random Poundlandy bits. Right, which one will I use? Which one will I use? Let's use this one, it's the biggest. And we'll just crowbar the circuitry at the base. So, I reckon it's probably glued in, but I could be wrong. Ugh. I'm not wrong, it is glued in. And this should hopefully reveal a little circuit board and Slightly cliched and predictable. Does it have a crystal? It does have a crystal. Oh, this is just so typical of these circuits. Uh, what's odd is that looks like a little voltage regulator. That's not switching the output, is it? I don't think it is. That's on the input. Okay, right, let's see if we can zoom down in this. So I'm just going to just close in just a tiny little bit here. Uh, focus on that to see if we can get it as sharp as possible. We have the little 8-pin microcontroller. We have the crystal connects here. Uh, they've glued this circuit board in, which is a bit odd. Uh, we've got two decoupling capacitors here. We've got a power supply decoupling capacitor on both the input and the output of this voltage regulator. I guess that's just for stability of operation. And then we've got the... A couple of resistors, probably a pull-down resistor, 
and then uh, the drive resistor for the transistor under here, which then switches the power along this wire here up to the LED at the end. And they kind of, they, I don't know if they just burnt that or if it's actually coloured. It's a black looking, I think they may have just have coloured it. So it's very simple, it's like the battery pack goes on to here, goes through this little voltage regulator. Let's find out what voltage that is. Just give me a second. Okay, here's a meter. So the common is the negative on this side. The incoming supply voltage from the battery is 4.3 volts. The output going to the circuitry is 3.3 volts. It is a 3.3 volt regulator, presumably just to provide consistent intensity. And also, uh, I wonder if that is that regulating current up to the LED? It might not be. In fact, no, I don't think it is. It's possibly just a... Uh, let's see, there's a resistor. All right, just give me a second. I'm going to probe this out. Okay, so the unit is using a 43 ohm resistor, 430, 43 and 0 is a multiplier, and it's switching it to the 3.3 volt rail, which means that despite the fact it's a parallel row of LEDs like this, the current the unit is drawing is only in the region of 11 or 12 milliamps. That's very low. That's a uh, really quite impressive because it looked okay and that means the batteries are going to last a good length of time even if it is on for six hours at a time every night with its timer so that's a interesting light it's a kind of unfortunate that i broke it but it doesn't really matter i've got the bits that count i've got this little bit here i do wonder why they didn't make a sort of v-shape out of this to make it look more like a convincing filament but just the single straight filament in its own doesn't look too bad so for Sainsbury's, it's actually quite creative. It, it looks relatively nice, even if it's that concretey look. And it did seem quite well sealed before we destroyed it with the ultraviolet proof glass dome. So it looks all right. It looks fine as what it is, just that sort of nice outdoor light with a built-in timer function. The one thing I would have changed is to use double A's instead of triple A's because that would have resulted in a much longer battery life in it and uh, many more nights of illumination.